first time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And speak on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, thy king thou shalt be. Thy friends and thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Walk over the time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service above. Jesus name we pray our father we are so grateful unto you because we are blessed we are learning wisdom is sweet to him that has understanding a word is enough for the wise how sweet are thy words they're sweeter than honey. We're enjoying you. We're blessed by the additional light you're giving to us. What a message you're giving to us again this morning. What a blessing. May this message walk in our lives. May we never forget it. May we remember it always. Set it before us constantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Care well for your spirit, soul, and body. Care well for your spirit, for your soul, and for your body. In the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, verse twenty-two to twenty-four. First Thessalonians, chapter five. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless unto the, uh, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. Can we read it together in the chorus? Verse 22 again to 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1, 2, go. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now, the three persons in a man, the spirit, soul, and body, should be well cared for. Should be well preserved. God, we always pray to God. Yes, it is the responsibility of God to preserve us blameless to the end. It's God's responsibility. But you also know that it is a dual responsibility. 
If we do our own portion well, God will surely do his own. It's a covenant. It's, there is an agreement between you and God consigning the preservation of yourself to the end of your life. God will do his own because he is faithful. Because you pray to him. Others pray for you, but you too must do your own role. It's a dual responsibility. It is the desire of God that we should be spiritually fruitful, holy, and healthy. For John wrote it in the book of 3 John, verse 1 and 2, the elder, unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Behold, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. It's the same thing. The prosperity of the whole man. The soundness of the whole man. The well-being of the whole man. The spirit, the soul, and the body. It's the desire of God. Brother, desire so for your fellow ones in Christ. Desire their soundness. Desire the soundness of their spirit, their soul, and the body. Of course, the spirit and the soul form the spiritual man. Let's put it together. Since it is, we don't see. What we see is the body. We cannot touch our spirit. We cannot touch our soul. And very often the spirit and the soul are joined tightly together. The Bible says it's the word of God that can separate between the two. But what we see is the body. So be careful. Wish your brother his well-being. Wish the members of your church their well-being. Their well Paul said, I have not shunned to present to you all that is profitable for you. All that is profitable for you. Because I desire your well-being. I desire your, well, your spiritual state. I desire your body also. Your body. That you may prosper in health. We need it. We want you to be healthy. In the body. If you are not healthy, how do you carry the will of God? He said, I pray God, your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. See how he wishes you to go to the end until the Lord comes either for you at death or in the rapture so that you carry your ministry to the end of it. You need preservation. You need preservation. And this preservation is to upon your body, upon your spirit, upon your soul. Yes. God desires that we who minister to others in the gospel should also minister to ourselves so that we may be first partaker of the benefits of the gospel. He's talking to us who are ministers. Take care of yourself because I want fullness from you. I want you to receive the blessing of it, spiritually, physically. Look at the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible says, The husbandman that laboured must be first partaker of the fruits. We're dealing spiritually, and we're dealing also with the physical body. In this, our discussion. In this, our message. Now, the Lord is talking here about your body, physical body. I mean your spiritual body rather. He's talking about the spirit and the soul now. Make sure you minister to your spirit and soul. Make sure you take care of your soul. Now, in your soul is combining this, this in understanding. Although they are separate, but the soul represents 
the, your spirit man. So make sure you take care of your soul well. Make sure you take care of your spiritual life well. Why is this said? It's because it is not often the case with many Christian workers and preachers. They neglect themselves. They are busy working for others and neglect their own lives. Point number one, ministering to others and neglecting yourself. Ministering to others and neglecting yourself. Point number two, Care for your spirit and soul. Care for your spirit and soul. Christian. Christian minister. Point number three. Care for your body and life. Care for your body and life. Now we go to number one. Ministering to others and neglecting your soul, yourself. In the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible tells us of this person. He said, Look not upon me, because I am black. Because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. Can we sing that in a chorus? Say that in a chorus. Verse 6, Songs of Solomon. That's shortly up before the book of Isaiah, is Sons of Solomon. Let's go. One, two, go. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not cared? Busy, busy, busy woman. Busy, busy, busy man. See this woman. She was not black before. She was fair as others were. She was a fair woman. But now she said, I have become black. And shame had come upon her. I have become black and shame had come upon her. That's why he said, no, don't look at me as if she's hiding herself now. But what brought this blackness to her? He said, I have been busy under the sun. Walking. That this walk, that walk. I've been busy in the kitchen. I've been busy in the house. I've been busy in the market. I've been busy in walking up and down. But what kept you busy? Human beings kept me busy. My mother's children. They kept me busy. I was busy serving them. I was busy serving others. You are busy serving others in the church. You are busy serving others in the chapter meeting. You are busy serving others in holiness revival movement. Good as it is. But see what she revealed. They made me keeper of the, vi of the vineyard. Plural. This person's vineyard, both this person's vineyard, I go here, I go there, I go there to please them. Because they are getting angry with me. I'm not being dragged. So I have to keep people peaceful. But he, she said, mine own vineyard. I had one for myself. I have my own vineyard. Their own. Yes, I'm busy going after their own. But my own vineyard, I have no care. See me now. I'm black. 
The storm has looked down upon me. Why? Going up and down caring for people's vineyard. But my own, you have a soul. You have a spirit. You are a pastor. You have a spirit that cries because he's hungry. He's crying. The spirit is crying. You have a spirit. Listen to the voice and the cry of your spirit in the book of Psalm 42. The cry, your spirit in you is crying. See what he's saying. As the heart, verse 1, as the heart planted after the water brooks, so planted my soul after thee, O God. My soul tested for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? That's the cry of your soul. You're busy up and down, but you have your soul. A soul that, sh that dies because of sin. For the soul that sinned, it shall die. That soul that you are starving, it shall die. That soul that you are not feeding is your own vineyard. It is your own vineyard. Your soul is crying and yet you are a preacher. You are a preacher. In fact, the people are testifying to your service. They are no more angry. They are testifying. But your soul is not kept. Now, come. What has taken over her vineyard? There are laws in this life, brother. There are laws. God will not change the law for you except in his perfect wisdom. And it is required for his glory. Which is not often like that. There are formulas in life. Now that you didn't keep your vineyard, what has happened to it? Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, the, chapter 2, verse 15. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little, little, fo the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. Foxes have come over your vineyard. Nobody is there to care for your vineyard. Little by little. Little by little. Little by little. Your tender grapes are being spoiled. There's tender fresh Christian life is being spoiled. Your true spiritual peace is now in the under turbulence. It's not cared for. You have not shaved your beard for long. It's, it's disfiguring your face. It's disfiguring your face. What happened? You don't have time. You have not cut your fingernails. We can see death inside it now. And people are saying, what happened to this man? Why is he like this? He doesn't have time. He doesn't have time. That's it now. Foxes have taken over your life. Little, little foxes. And the tenderness of the Christian life has been destroyed. Anger now can come. Why will not anger come? It's the natural law. It's a natural law. Anger came because the soul was not fed. That's why you cannot be angry. Lusting came. They are the foxes. Why did they not? How will it not come? You're dealing with this woman. What kept with women around you, with men around you, what kept you from lust? Ask me, what kept Peter from sinking in the water when Jesus beat him come? 
it was because his eyes were towards Jesus. His eyes looked outside him, outside Jesus. What happened to him? It's natural law. He began to sing. The loss that is coming into your heart is a natural law. It's because you don't care for your heart. You're not giving the heart what is required to keep it clean. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. But did you take any time to fix it, to put any word there? Do you have the time? When you woke up, did you read the Bible? Those messages you used to hear before, did you hear? It's a natural law. When dry season in your life, the stones in the river will now be seen. The sand in the bottom of the river will now be seen because the waters have dried up. Why? Rain has stopped. Your own rain has stopped. That's why the dryness you are feeling now takes over. Little forces. Little forces. Little forces. You're not strong. But you're still actively walking. Even when Saul left the Lord, was he not still king? You're still serving. The gifts of God are without repentance. You're still remaining gifts, demonstrating gifts. Pride now comes in. You're even surprised yourself. The language you speak, you hear the smoke of the language and you saw some... Some dirty things are inside the way you speak. Wow! Inside does not have a cleanser. Now ye are cleaned through the word that I have spoken unto you. Which word have you heard from Jesus now? Which word have you heard from Jesus now? How will you be clean? Why wouldn't polluted words come out of your mouth? Why wouldn't lies, broken bottles of lies, be seen around you? It's natural. It's natural formula. Hey, but your case is serious. Because you have been a noble man. You have been a very good man. You were respected seriously in Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 1. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So that a little folly in him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. That's why the Bible said, be ye perfect. Because with all this reputation you have made, with all this honor, to see sin in your life, your life, people who knew you before will see your life. They will, they will walk there. They, 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 they will shake their heads. Say, you mean, ah, Pastor, somebody, a woman may even say, I, I stood by Pastor. The way Pastor was looking at me, Ah, it's like this other men. What has happened? The pastor is no more praying. The pastor has left prayer. Go and ask him when did he fast last? When did Pastor fast last? Go and ask him. When did he sit down to read the scriptures? Go and ask Pastor. That's why even Pastor himself was surprised the way he started looking at your, your face. Looking at your buttocks, looking at your stomach. Even Pastor was, af was he was afraid. Eh? Uh -uh. How will you not do that? There's no strength in you. You have no strength in your life. Your own vineyard you are not keeping. That's what the Lord is saying. Take care, care well for your spirit and soul. Care well for your spirit and soul. The water is hot because there is a fire under it. 
That's why the water remains hot. There's a fire under it. But if the fire be quenched, the heat will be coming down per second. The heat will be coming down. Many are employed or recruited into the ministry and work tirelessly to minister to others. They receive commendation as faithful servants, but neglect the care of themselves. The result is that little foxes come up to destroy their righteousness and holiness before God and man. They engage themselves as teachers of God's word, teaching others fervently, but they don't have time to teach themselves. In Romans chapter 2, verse 17 to 24. Romans chapter 2, verse 17 to 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and rested in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, teacher of birds, who has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore, who teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest, a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest, a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou, com dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. That's your state now. That's your state now. You have the form of knowledge. You know the doctrine. You know the Bible. You know the verses and the interpretations. Paul, Solomon said, my wisdom still remains with me. Although I backslid, my wisdom still remains with me. You still have this knowledge. In fact, you still know how to go and cast out devils. You know the language to speak. You know how to become serious when the matter involves devils. You know it. You know what to say. You know how to counsel others. But what is happening to you? Why are you doing the things that you preach against? You were not caring for yourself. You abandoned your vineyard. Thou that teachest others, teachest thou not thyself? Is it, is yours is application. Better you, those people didn't know, you are giving them knowledge. But you, you know, can't you apply this thing to yourself? Can't you sit down and say, I know these things? The prodigal son had already known what it means by going back home. He knows the road. All he needed is to rise up and follow the road. All he needed to do was to rise up and follow the road. Back home. You know the road, but you're not following. It's bad. You're not doing good for yourself. You're not doing good to yourself. Sister, you are not doing good to yourself. How do you allow the kitchen to take over your life? Don't complain. Matter, 
Don't be talking. Hey, this work of the kitchen. Let there be fasting in that house for three days. So that you can go to heaven. If the Lord asks us to fast for three days so that our mother will go to heaven, we will not fast. Who told you that life must be food? You have not taught this for yourself. If you ask God earnestly, He will give you wisdom. If you can negotiate well with your family, they will create time for you. So go and go and pray. Go and seek the Lord. But how did you come to this point? How art thou fallen from heaven? How? That you become like this now. That now you can fight. You can speak foul language. You can speak corrupt communication. Your anger is like a lion. Lioness. How did you come to that point? You neglected yourself. You kept other people's vineyard. And your vineyard you never cared. Folly now has come to you that even your service is abomination. A little dead flower in the oil of the apothecary. Sweet oil with good smell. As long as the people see dead flies there, the oil is actually not smelling. Is it smelling? But it is smelling spiritually. People will want to remove their eyes. And hold their nose at you because you're smelling beautiful oil. Why? You are not caring for yourself, and folly has come into you. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8 and verse 9. The Bible says, Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yeah, green hairs are here and there upon him. Yet, he knoweth it not. Can you see? How did it happen like that? He mixed himself with the people. You are having friends who, don't, who are not Christians. You are having friends who don't have Christian vision. You sit down from morning to afternoon. Talk and laugh and talk and laugh until your strength is gone. The next thing is to go and sleep. Oh, sleeper. And when you sleep, oh, you have labored in talk. You have labored to love. You will sleep deeply. You will sleep deeply. You have mixed yourself with the people. You have gone to join society people who don't have any Jesus coming back for them, who are not commissioned by God to do any service for them, who did not know anything about holy living, they are the people that have kept you occupied. You have gone to do business like them. You are now seeking money like the people. Everyone is running for money. You have joined them. So, as a result, greed here is here and there. The upper side of you is Christian. The lower part of you is not Christian. It's a cat not turned. The underneath, you can see, is done. The upper side is not done. Because it is not turned. That's the difference. It is not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength. You know the strangers. The strangers you brought into yourself that have now devoured your strength. Brother, you know them. As for our iniquity, we know them. Our sins and our transgressions are not hidden before us. That's what the word of God is saying. 
again. This is what God wants you to know. You are now struggling. You are even struggling. What are you struggling to do? Matthew chapter 7. Verse 3 to verse 5. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 3 to verse 5. The Bible says, And where beholdest thou the moth that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Why? Why? Beholdest thou the moth that is in thy brother's eye. That's what you are doing now. You are now treating others. You are looking for them to treat. We are going for crusade. To go and say what? What are you going to tell the people in the crusade? I will tell them, repent and believe in Jesus. What about your own immorality? What about your own immorality? What about your rough life now? See the way you treat your wife now. Rough, angry. So you will not repent. You won't repent. You're going to ask another innocent man over there to repent. That's what you're saying. You're going to ask another man. Who may be better than you to repent? And you are not one of those to repent. You're struggling. Oh, how will thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mud out of thine eyes? And behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Let's go to verse 5 and say it in a chorus. Are you there? I say, are you there? Put your eyes on verse 5. Put your eye on verse 5. Put your eye on verse 5. One, two, go. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. And then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mud out of thy brother's eye. Do you know that you're, you're a hypocrite? How many people here know that they are hypocrites? <laughs> are you getting what we're saying? You may not say so, but Jesus says you are. Jesus says you are. Because you have a big problem. Your own is bigger because to him that knoweth his master's will and doeth it not, to him he shall be beaten with many stripes. You know your master's will. You know your master's word. You know that your master wants you to talk to him now. You even know that your master wants to speak to you. You have no time for him. You have no time. Busy on other things. No time. So brother, care for your spirit and soul. Hmm. When this program came, I don't understand how you people reason. That you have a time like this, and you are asking, Pastor, I want to travel. Are you in your senses? Do you take well? Are you part of those going to heaven? What can it profit you if you gain the whole world and miss your own soul? You don't know priority of life. You don't know what is how to set your priority right. Others' vineyard I have kept by my own vineyard. What if this program was a crusade you went for? 
would you have left the crusade on the way? But that one will be ministering to others. Would you have left this crusade on the way? I said, hey, I want to rush home. This is time for you to, be, to care for your vineyard. You don't understand. You're not seeing vision of heaven. You're not seeing. That's the problem of these people. You don't know priorities. How to set your priorities right. How to give honor to God. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but to God what is God's. And God is a million infinity higher than Caesar. And this is the time of God. You don't know how to give him. How will you not be black inside? How will you not? Other people's vineyards I have kept. My own vineyards, no time. Oh, you're sitting down here, you're not preaching. That's why you feel you don't have time. I'm so, you feel it's not necessary. I've heard, I will handle this later. It's because you're not preaching. Preaching is not given to you. It's time to sit down. Uh, you will not say, Kai, this meeting is too long. You know, we who preach don't know long messages. <laughs> it's people who sit down that know that ah, this message is too long. But we who are doing the preaching, do we feel it? But pardon me, eh? That is it. It is when you're preaching, you're involved. When you're not preaching, you're not involved. Change that. It's better, at this time, it's better to receive than to give. When it involves a matter of eternal life. Because if you give and gather the whole earth and don't have in yourself, you received nothing, it shall profit you in nothing. Take care for sitting down. You go to play CDs for people in chapter meeting, coordinators, you don't sit there. Okay, go and listen to this, and you will not sit there. Other people's vineyard I have kept. Vineyard! Many! My own. No. Do you know that listening to CDs alone and listening to it in a group are two different things? Do you know that listening to it at your leisure time and listening to it, Queen, much prayer has been prayed to water the ground, bind the devil, and pray for the presence of God to be there. It are two different things. But you don't go to listen to those messages. You play and leave. That's why you are black in your heart. And God, who knows you're not serious, doesn't bother with you. You know you're not serious. Go to the ants, thou sluggard. Go and learn her ways and be wise. Who, having not guide nor overseer, does what will keep him living. Because nobody is there. You are the one there. No one is again there. You do as you want. You come to church the time you want to come to church. You sit where you want to sit, given the flesh its own ease. The one. Care for this, your spirit and your soul. In the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 5. Second Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 5. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves. 
praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Now we're going to read verse 5 together. One, two, go, and this they did. Not as we hoped, but faith gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. I've told you, as far as matters of heaven is concerned, it's better for your individual life. It's better to receive than to give. But if it is matter of money, it's better to give than to receive. Material things, it's better to give than to receive. Spiritual things, better to receive than to give. Look at these people. They were ready to support Paul. Even in their poverty, ready to support Paul. But they cared first for their souls. They cared first for their spiritual life. And this they did. Say it, my brother. And this they did. Say it again. Say it again. First, give their own selves to the Lord. Say it. Preachers, including myself, let's learn to first give our own selves to the Lord. Let's learn to first seek the Lord for ourselves. Let's learn to first receive spiritual warmth of the Lord for ourselves. Let's first learn how to receive fellowship with the Lord for ourselves. Then we can go for service. Then we can go for preaching. Then we can go for preaching. First give their own selves to the Lord and to us for the ministry. The Macedonian believers were zealous for the work of God. They provided support for Paul's ministry. Paul's testimony was that these people first gave their own lives to Christ and in a daily way commit themselves to the Lord. And then to us with evidence. Before rendering him service, repentance and salvation from sin through faith in Christ is required for you. Yes. As you feed others in Christian service, remember to feed your soul. To feed your spirit with the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Live by it. First feed on it. Every word. Read the Bible. It's every word of God. Study the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the revelations. It's the word of God. I mean the true revelations. Attested revelations. Be feeding also. Knowledge grows. I'm preaching to you now. After a few times, when you sit down to listen to this message, you will wonder whether you were in this conference. Is it like that? Yeah. But when you give somebody a message, listen to this. I have listened to it before. When did you listen to it? I listened to it last year. <laughs> These are people who have not understood that the word of God cannot be exhausted. It is new everybody. That is it. Study the world. Go back there. Study the world. 
Get these messages. These messages. Listen to them. A particular brother, he saw me on Saturday here in the stage, in the Guagualda Combined Chapter Meeting. He said the Lord gave him a message to me seven months ago. He couldn't come to deliver it. But the Lord kept troubling him. Go and deliver the message. It came, the message came when himself and his wife decided to pray for the revival of holiness and revival movement constantly. So the Lord now spoke and said, Go and tell my servant. The message I give him come from me. And the church, that's the, the brethren, are not behaving towards the message as I desire. It is my heart, the God of life, that as they receive this message, they should distribute it to all the world. They should not keep it, but they receive and keep it. I'm not happy. Our brother, there's something our brother said about what the Lord told another brother about these messages. Is that so? Please give him a microphone very quickly. Yes. He shared it with me. And that is the mind of God. This one told me it's on three days ago. He's agreeing to what he also had told me. And that which I know. Praise the Lord. In Bauchi, we have, we try to articulate some of the messages of the movement into tracks. Louder. Into tracks. So even the brother, he's here, sir. Okay, yes. where is he? So it evangelist maker. So he told me that as we are writing the second uh, part of the track, the Lord said, every church, every pastor, every ministry in the whole world that you should include in the track at the end that must listen to holiness revival movement messages. So he said, when he was asking the Lord, what would the world think? What would the body of Christ think? The Lord told him that in every generation, he raises a man. And when he raises a man, he expects the entire generation to listen to him. And began to give him example from the time of Moses. Well, since the, sing, the composer of the song is here, a song is better hard from the composer. Let's listen to our brother. Uh, what did the Lord tell you? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me the grace to write tracks uh, this time around. So when I, when I was writing qualification and standards for heaven, so it was, I've already written it down. So one other one night, I wrote about that everybody should join holiness movement. Or those who don't listen to the message are risking their life. So the Holy Ghost will uh, give it the message that in every generation there is somebody, uh, God usually raised a man that you told the rest of the world, hear you him. So I told the pastor that that's what the Holy Ghost told me to write, to add to the track where people should join holiness movement. Amen. So this is the mind of God. Listen to these messages. They are for you. Listen to them personally. God has given them. Don't be tired with them. How are we listening to Pastor Rika every day? The mixed multitude does their language. Because we are tired with this manner. The food that came from heaven. They are looking for the one from Egypt. They are looking for prosperity preachers too. They are looking for these other preachers too. As for this manner that God gave himself, they said, we are tired with this manner. That's the language of backsliders. The Lord is the one who gave you these messages. The Lord is the one that organizes this holiness conference. Holiness movement and puts you in chapters and say you should be listening to these messages. He sends them. 
Don't get tired with them. Don't lose them as the backsliding children of Israel disdained the manna from heaven. Go and renew yourself. Go and refresh yourself. Go and revise the people that the devil will not attack them against these messages. Each one of them lives forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If you become tired with the Bible, then what will you do? You want to go and read Quran? Or oh, seven books of Moses? You say you are tired with the Bible. Then you are tired with God. Rebuke that flesh in your life and be spiritual. That is it. Care well for your spirit and for your soul. Observe your quiet time with God. Take enough time. Maybe some of you are too busy in the morning. Create time in another time. Even in your office, you can create time there. You can create time there. If you do it, God will help you. Create time. Find time with God. I remember in my office time, I would trek from here, maybe to uh, get into, maybe, let's towards that mountain. I will be praying on the way. Because I can't be in the office and pray. I will be praying on the way. By the time I reach there, I pray back. I've gotten some at some good time to pray in the office. I feel fine. I feel fine. And it's nothing. When somebody comes to look for you, they say, oh no, he went out. Is there any problem? They should wait for you. And that's wisdom. Save yourself. Save yourself. Do all you can to save yourself. Yes. Yeah. Make personal spiritual commitment. I remember one time I said I will listen to four messages per week, um, per, per day, for one week. That commitment was heavy. That commitment was heavy. It took me to 12 midnight, it took me to standing. To ensure I didn't sleep. It took, because apart from other busy things in life, I have committed myself to it. Jafta, oh, I have made commitment, I cannot retreat. I listened to 28 messages in one week. Go and make commitment. Try your best. Make commitment. The Lord spoke to me, I should commit you. I should, I should give you assignments. As you're finishing this, I should give you another one. He told me, as you're finishing, give them another one. Commit them. Don't play with them. Take them seriously. I have given them over to you to lead to heaven. So assignments come to you and you're lazy. The wisdom of God is playing on you and you're playing also with it. Are you ready for heaven? Are you ready to go to heaven? I, we are checking up the people. We are too serious that you can't hide anywhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't give complaint to God. If you cannot do that, which will keep yourself spiritual, how do you feed the people? How do you feed them? God said I should give you that assignment. Don't think you're doing it for me. You're doing it for God. He will judge you for it. You're playing laziness. If you don't qualify, he'll get you out of the way. There is no time to play. Okay? Congregation, do we have time to play? Do we have time to waste? Our, four, our fathers have wasted enough of the time. And the Lord is already coming now. So whatever assignment comes to you, rise up and do. We're patient with you, but don't in one month's time stand like that. Amen? We know the flesh. That's why we're giving you a push. We're giving you a push so that 
if the flesh is talking, you say, ah, 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 don't talk like that because don't endanger my life. We know, we're human beings like you too. And you are not doing it. Uh, not here. <clears throat> not here. Not this place. So, that's what you should do to keep yourself. Plan out prayer time. Observe fasting, night vigils, join others in spiritual activities and exercise. Leaders, when the members of your church are praying, join them. Don't go and sit in the office, hypocrites. What are you sitting in the office? Are you the only one that has sleep? Are you the only one that is tired? Do you know where those members came from? Why are you training them and forcing them for heaven and you yourself are going to hell? Doesn't God see? Go there. Go right there. <laughs> Suffer it also as they are suffering for they are human beings like you. Go and suffer it there. If you must do go and do before them. They will understand. Otherwise, as you, you don't want them to do you are giving them reasons why they should not. Give yourself the reason to. Practice those things that will make you not to do Pray. Pray. The Lord said to us, when, you're, when people are doing prayer, join them. You and your wife join them. He spoke this thing out. You and your wife. Join them. Don't play like others. We do for others and not for ourselves. For the Lord is watching. He, he, it's not the amount of prayer you pray. It is God that showeth mercy. How will he show you mercy who has judged you unfaithful? Go and do it. I will pay. I want people to labor. I want people to labor. Go and do it. Then I will give you the reward. So go and rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Recover. Everybody say we shall recover. Say I will recover. I believe your words. Yes. Seek counsel on how to do it well in the Lord and win over the enemy. Do this to keep yourself in Christ. Yes. Do this to keep yourself in Christ. Pastor, manage your family spiritually. Genesis chapter 18. Verse, 19, verse 17 to 19. Genesis chapter 18. Verse 17 to 19. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Has God spoken good of you concerning what he will do? Is God assuring you of some wonderful future? Has he told holiness movement that it shall be well with us? Then he said, I know Abraham, his family, his children, his household. I know Abraham. He will command. Everybody say command. If you submit yourself to your wife, and allow your wife to rule you, your ministry is gone. And you have no reason. What were you going to tell God? 
He said you should command. He puts authority in Abraham. To command them for what? Command them for spirituality in that house. It's required for your own ministerial progress. Your ministerial progress is more than the food your wife gives you. If she is giving you food because she wants you to live, she should submit to your spiritual authority in that house so that you should also live spiritually and ministerially. And that is teach them the word. Bring them to devotion. Bring them to devotion in that family. Children, wife, and all that are there. Come on. Otherwise, you are following a short road. It shall soon end. For God is not careless with his resources. He is not careless. Wives, pastor's wives, there are demons called pastor's wives' demons. They are only interested, when they come to church, they are only interested in pastor's wives. To make them come late. To make them sit at the back or under a tree. To make them stand up and move. To make them not even to come. Yes, pastor's wife demon. <laughs> Examine every pastor's wife, whether he, she has a demon. What are the signs? Eh? You better cast out that demon because don't allow that demon to cause trouble for yourself in the church. Get that spirit out of your life. Spirit of late coming. Spirit of busy here and there. As your servant was busy here and there, the spiritual life is gone. Maka! Maka! You are troubled over many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen it. It shall never be taken away from her. You are busy saying, Master, I will eat food. The reason why, in fact, eat food. You didn't hear that I fasted for 40 days and I didn't eat. How many days have I spent in your house? Why didn't you wake up early? Why didn't you plan your way? Why? Why didn't you plan your way to make sure you conform until you're bringing blasphemy to the, to the ministry of your husband? You're rendering your husband weak in the pulpit. You're rendering him weak. God will hold you responsible. God will hold you responsible. But God and devils are over you. God wants to win you. Because if he succeeds in you, your husband shall have a blessed future. Otherwise, all the laughter you put in your face, all the friendship you think you are making with women, it shall never last. Because the real life is the heart. And nothing has gone into your heart. You have no time. Other vineyards you have kept. Your own vineyards you have not kept. Coordinators, I've heard it. Your wife don't go to chapter meetings. Your wife, and I'm ready to remove them from seven minute committee. That's removal number one. We're not ready to play here. If she is an unbeliever and we chose that, okay, you should still be a coordinator, then we chose, we judged, and the Lord allowed us to make you a coordinator. We won't bother with her. But for her to say she is a believer and is not coming to chapter meeting, don't give us another reason. If you give us a reason today, when we say, okay, maybe that's what helped her not to come, made her not to come today, that, don't give that reason tomorrow. Don't give that reason tomorrow. We expect her to find solution. Otherwise, why are you having women under you? Do, is your wife better than them? Is your wife more, more occupied than these other women? Is your wife have more children than these other women? Why is she backwards? It's because of pastor's wife demon. 
Better take care of your wife. Use authority. I, he shall command. He shall command. Help her in any area she needs help. Do whatever is required to assist her. Don't lose that soul. Don't. The Lord shall ask you of her. If you try your best and it fails, then like John Wesley, let the Lord be witness. Let the Lord be witness. This Christianity that they did them and fell. You didn't hear that this is the last one? You didn't hear that this is the last revival the Lord is doing? If any man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. But a bishop must be the husband of one wife. Having faithful children, not accused of riot. Not unruly. Moreover, must their wives be grave, not double tongued. Moreover, their wives, wives of bishops, wives of deacons, the same. The wife of deacons should not be holier than the wives of bishops. Where are the pastor's wives? Stand up here. You, pastor, you are, your husband is a coordinator. Stand up. Check whether one of them is sleeping. You are the one we're talking to. My wife there, stand up too. You are the ones we're talking to. Don't bring blemish to this ministry. Don't behave contrary in your houses over this special calling the Lord gave your husband. Otherwise, it will be terrible for you. I'm telling you the truth. Don't. Don't be a master of yourself. You're under your husband. And the Lord has asked him to command you to do that which is spiritually okay. Submit to him at home. Submit and do it. Don't be a late comer, perpetual late comer. If you come late today for any reason, oh, there can be real reasons. We know because maybe some things are on you, but master it. If you, be dele if you need to delegate them, delegate them. We want to see you early in church. We want to see you in chapter meetings, in unit meetings. In, you are a human being. Your name may be, or your name can be, or may not be in the book of life. Labor to serve yourself. Do you love holiness movement? Pastors' wives, coordinators' wives. Do you love holiness movement? Show it by your life. To comfort them, can you clap hands for them? You know they are wonderful women. <laughs> wonderful. God chose them specially. God selected them. God knows them. God loves them. That's why he said, the person I love, I reprove and chasten. You can sit down. Thank you. Join your husband together. Care for the children. Make, every, make the family conducive for Christian ministry. Finally, care for your body and life. Care for your body and life. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, your body. 
your body, your flesh now. That's the one you can you put on. Your body, your body. Everybody touch your body. Let me see whether you want. Ah, uh -huh, that body, that body. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, preserve that body. God is willing to get that body preserved. Many died before their time. They never cared for this body. They never give attention to this body. God is interested that your body be preserved blameless. No sickness. Your body be preserved blameless. No condition inhibiting Christians, Christian life and service. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, The book of Ephesians chapter 5, I read verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own body, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord does to the church. Your body, don't hate that body. Don't do evil to that body. Nourish that body. Feed it well. Feed your body with good fruit. Good food. Anything that is going to be a good thing to do to a body. In, to make it healthy. To make it sound. To remove the pain from it. To remove sickness from it, take it and keep your body healthy. Prosper in health. Cherish that body. Cherish it. Nourish it. Cherish it. Don't be careless over it. Then don't expose that body to danger. Don't expose that body to damage. Keep it well. Keep it healthy. God wants it so. It plays. Although the spirit is the one that gets born again. But for a life in this world, that body is essential. It can end up the activity of your spirit. And send your spirit and soul back to eternity. If you don't care for it well. Care for your body. Life is in the blood. Your body contains your life on earth. The main person in that building is yourself. But the building is important. Is that so? The building itself is important because it plays its own role. Otherwise, how will you be hidden from the sun? How will you be hidden from the wind? How will you be hidden from the rain? How will you be hidden from evil workers, evil men? How would you have real rest without a house? The body is your house. If you get that body damaged, it will affect your inside. The enemy will take occasion. That's why some thieves, when they want to enter in to see you, they have to break through the body. Some will dig from outside, dig down the wall. Dig down the wall of the house. So be careful. Watch over. That's why they have watchmen over the house. It plays its own role in your life. A big man. You are inside. You still employ watchmen to watch over the house. Actually, it's not really the house, but watch over you. Because if the enemy breaks through the house, he has access to you. Yes. The body may, may inhibit your activities in life, 
or may even terminate your life from the earth. Hence, you are required by God to take care of your body. You need to have knowledge of things or ways required to preserve your body. Knowledge has increased. That's what we even allow you to do, knowledge of medicine. You, your body needs it. Your body needs it to be preserved. If you allow that stomach ache there, you cannot rise up. You won't be able to stand in the pulpit. Can you? A biting stomach ulcer? You will want to go and lie down flat like a lizard. You cannot move. Your body has been affected. What if accident happens and they have to amputate your, your, your leg? Brother, automatically, many things about the gospel has been limited in your life. Many. What if you, love, you lost your eyes? Because cataract is coming up in your eyes, you didn't, you didn't bother. Your usefulness in life has been affected. What if you, lo you, 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 you lost your teeth? Your teeth. Come. Is it a good thing when somebody stands speaking and the teeth are not as I know, there's no, there's no door. <laughs> Limited number of people will hear you. Some human beings, they are, their body irritates to little things. You have reduced the number of congregations that will hear you. Take care of that body. Keep it well. Do that which is just to it. Feed your body with appropriate food for your health. Be careful with fasting. Don't, get, don't be so power driven to the point of destroying your body. There's formula in life. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Subject that body to a condition. It shall be so. You will find it so. A particular pastor said, I finished my fasting. How did you finish your fasting? He went marathon fasting as a young preacher until his stomach also carried him. So he said, He has finished. <laughs> he has finished. Demons also have finished. Why did you finish carrying your demons so long, so young, I mean, so early? Problems of life have finished. Let your moderation be known to all men. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 27, Acts of Apostles, chapter 27. I read verse 33 to 36. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, to eat food, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hear fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat, took some bread, food. He said, this is required for your health. This is required for your health. You are starving that body. You will reap it at your end. Some people have accident today. They don't feel it until after 40 years. They don't feel it. Until after 40 years, they go to the doctor. The doctor begins to ask, Have you ever had an accident? Eh? 40 years ago, oh, okay, this is the one. It's the one manifesting now. Oh, that you were wise that time. You wouldn't have neglected that matter. 
then the present disadvantage that has come would not be there. Do you know something? That this body, if you don't take care of it, it might be the reason why you may backslide tomorrow. Because some sicknesses come on some people. The pain is so much that they start abusing God. They start abusing God. Is it not Job's body that the wife said, Praise God and die? It was of his body. If Job was not committed, the case of his sickness was enough to make him angry with God. The case of his sickness was enough. You're doing nothing in this your early time to care for this body. You're waiting for when you, you become older and the body takes another share because of the way you treated it in the yesteryears. And then you say, God, I have labored for you. Why did you allow my body? God, why is my body twisted like this? God, why, why? The way you did it, whatever a man sows, you didn't sow well to your body. That's why you're reaping that. And now you want, you want to blame God? You didn't hear his words? My people perish for lack of knowledge. Control your fasting. Control your fasting. Let your moderation be known to all men. Let your moderation be known to all men. Control your fasting. That's the word of God. Do not engage in careless fasting or high risky business as will bring ill health to your body and affect your performance. There's some business that will give you asthma. Now it will not show, but later it will show. And then you begin to blame God. Or activities of life have been inhibited. Check it up now. Study. Take time to listen. Be fast to hear. When we are teaching on these hell tips, don't say you don't need them. You have gotten faith. There's place for faith. There's place for knowledge. Add to your faith knowledge. You need it. Yes. Let there be moderation or self-control in everything. The drunkards are told your stomach ulcer came because of the, the alcohol you take to it. Have you had so? The smokers are told the cancer of your body came because of the smoke you sent into it. Check your habits, your eating habits. Are you overeating one thing? Find out whether there's implication. Although you love it, let your moderation be known to all men. Have self-control. Temperance. Give the body rest after a long, hard walk. Jesus taught his disciples this in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 30 and 31 Mark chapter 6 verse 30 and 31 and the people gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all this Things and told him all things, but what they have done and what they have taught. Let's read verse 31 together. One, two, go. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Verse 32, and they departed into a desert place by sheep privately. 
Give a cup of wine to Jesus and rejoice for what the Lord is teaching you. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be fruitful. You are going to be prosperous. He that knows the truth, he shall be set free. Your future is certain. The, the, the poison waiting for you in the future has been removed. The truth shall make you free. Look at this scripture. Oh, you have come from a duty now. Take time to rest. The rest may not go to too long a time, but you need rest. You need rest. But do you know the word? He said, Leisure. Everybody said, Leisure. Say, Leisure. Say it again. Rest, Leisure. It means do something that will give your heart relaxation, your mind joy and peace. Do something. That will give your mind peace. Some just go and sit under a river and be watching as it goes. They feel happy. That's leisure. You, lo you left preaching. You didn't go for evangelism. <laughs> I returned for evangelism and I want to recover. That's why I'm sitting under this sea, this river, to watch creation of God. I take the light. In washing creation of God. And it gives me leisure. That's what the Lord expects of you. Be free to do that. Or else you go and sit under a flower. Under a garden. And you take leisure. Some. There can be a dutiful rock. In their house. They just lie on the rock and be rolling. Just rolling and be laughing. It's leisure. It's happy. It's happy, is that so? Some go to sit under the AC. It's leisure. And be, and be drinking it. It's leisure. Some have some good things to watch that it, it, it excites them. It's leisure. Everybody has that which interests them. You need it to recover, to refresh. Of course, you can have a talk too. Maybe you want to have a talk with someone, a chat. It is leisure. All work and no play. Continue. All work and no play. I'm saying this so that when a person is on leisure, you will say, hey, look at these people. <laughs> Amen. You come into somebody's house and you see a beautiful cushion chair there, a cushion chairs. And the way he decorated the house, you say, oh, people can waste the money of God. <laughs> Amen. God has given us freely all things to enjoy. Watching those things gives him leisure to cause him to recover and go back to the work. It's part of it. It's part of it. No sin is inside. No iniquity is inside. Watch. Just see. Just hear. Just relay. Sometimes in sports. Some say, oh, we play badminton. It's in my house. I play it with either my, one of my children or a friend. It's leisure. It relaxes the body, that the body has no tension. You whose knowledge is small, when people keep talking, keep quiet, be fast to hear. Is that clear? Otherwise you'll be wondering, Eh, I went to his house and saw him play badminton. Hey, these Christians of these days, Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus taught his disciples this. Avoid places of danger and take precaution for your soul. Don't say you have faith. 
in the book of John chapter 7. John chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 9. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea. And thy disciples also may see, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest, for there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself is seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet, is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet unto this feast, my for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Wow, danger was over there. Brother, be careful of night journey because it is always very risky, both of robbers and of accidents. The Lord will take care of those things. Although I have not banned that completely, if you are persuaded, do. But if you are told this road is risky in the night, stay back. Please stay back. And then in the morning, you can continue your journey. See Jesus. He cannot just carry this body. For them to go and stone and kill it, he won't finish the work that brought him. So be careful in taking risk. Be careful. Eh, I don't bother eating anything because I shall eat in poison, it shall not hurt me. Yes, but not in those respects of carelessness. That mango, is it washed? My stomach will sanctify it. You're taking risky steps. Cut down yourself from this high mountain, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee. What was the answer of Jesus? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That promise is given for circumstances you cannot control. God knows. He will activate his promise. Not for carelessness. Not for carelessness. That you can eat food from anybody anyhow. You can eat food anyhow. And you people choose any woman to cook, cook food for pastor. You don't know that we have enemies in this gospel? You choose anybody. Any woman can be forward. Some of these witches and wizards are very forward. I will be the one to take care of pastor. I will be the one to I will cook. You think that it is righteousness talking? You must pray well. Pray very well. Is your wife really qualified? This woman that is fighting with you in the house all the time, she wants to cook for pastor. Under what anointing? Check well. Don't be careless. Don't expose pastor to danger. Don't expose one another to danger. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Wake her! Yes, the Lord is doing it, but let truth come. Let truth come. Learn it too. So that you, even you, can handle such matters. The smaller matters here shall judge. Take care of exposing yourself to risk. If you are sick, pray to God to heal you. If it persists, you may call the elders to pray for you. Where required, you may consult a doctor for your care. It is wisdom to submit to hospital tests to know your physical condition. 
Many of you here are diabetic. Many have hypertension. Many have some other sicknesses that if they could know them now, they will handle them. But, bro, uh, can, you, can we test you? Bro, don't bother. It's fear. And you're doing harm to yourself. I prefer not to know what is in me. Ignorance will kill you. Ignorance. You prefer not to know what is in you. You prefer not to know. Bro, brother, brother, thieves are in your house. Why are you giving me that information? You want to hinder me from going to house? I don't like that. I want to go to my house. That's you. You don't like truth. You hide under darkness. You hide under a lie. If you have problem, why not go to hospital? If you delay in maybe in childbearing with your wife, why don't you go to hospital? You've been praying. If you see yourself not sleeping well, why don't you go to hospital and check out? You have been praying. Why not do that? It's for your good. It's for your good. Let not the devil kill you through ignorance. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Why are you afraid? Truth is always, is always truth. Hospital tests will not give you a thing that is not in your body. By the way, you have a chance to test here and test there and test there. Get it. So that it is not one day when the thing has torn you down. Or they say he suddenly died of heart, heart attack. He died. Why? When it came in, he could have detected it by the wisdom of God through uh, the instruments of men. He said no. And the Lord kept quiet. Now that you die through carelessness, was it really fate? It was not fate. If it was fate, you wouldn't have died. If it was really real fate, you would have not died. But now that you have died in that way, where are you going? That you refuse. He that rejects the commandment, even his prayer is an abomination before God. Have you heard that? The soul that hardened his neck, he that hardened his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. The Lord bless you forever. The Lord make you to use this knowledge. The Lord keep you alive. The Lord give you grace to walk for him to the end. May the Lord save your family. May the Lord save your neighbor. May the Lord save the world. May the Lord make you an instrument in his hand. May the Lord keep you healthy, brother. May he make you spiritually healthy. Rise up and commit yourself to him.
Jesus' name we pray. Open my eyes, O Lord, O my Savior. My Redeemer, open down my eyes. Oh my father, oh my savior, Holy Ghost, do it again. I pray. O oh Lord, Holy Ghost, in my life, oh, oh. I pray how excellent Excellent is your name, O oh Lord, how excellent. We thank you, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name. Praise you, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how wonderful is your name, oh Lord, how beautiful is your name, oh Lord. How beautiful. How beautiful Father, we thank you. How beautiful is your name. How beautiful is your name. How beautiful is your name. Father, Lord, we praise you. How beautiful is your name. How beautiful is your name. How beautiful.
Powerful is your word, O Lord. How powerful is your word, is your word, O Lord. Lord, we love you. How powerful is your word, how powerful is your word. How powerful is your word, my Lord, remain. How powerful is your word, how powerful is your word, how powerful is your word, oh Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, Lord, I pray, oh Lord, something new in my life. Something new in my heart. Oh Lord, something beautiful. There's something beautiful in my life. Something beautiful in my life. Something beautiful in my life. You think beautiful in my life, think beautiful in my life, something beautiful in my life, oh Lord, something permanent. Permanent in my life. Permanent in my life. Permanent in my life. Oh Lord, God we put you. Permanent in my life. Permanent in my life, something permanent in my life. Oh Lord, something glorious, glorious. Oh, something glorious in my life. Father, we love you. Something glorious in my life. Glorious in my life. Something glorious in my life. Oh, Lord. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Give thanks to the God of heaven. What? We give thanks to you for what you have done, what you are teaching us. Father, bless us. God, thank you for this thing. Jesus, thank you for this thing. Jesus, thank you for this thing. Worship. Worship. Jesus, thank you for this thing. We bless you. We worship you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take glory. Take glory. Thank you, Lord. Jesus name we pray God bless you sit down the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813. 635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in you You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are my living Savior. I believe in you. You are my Yeah.
believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you. I love you. I believe. I believe, I believe. 